Good evening. Welcome to Hastings Mystery Theater. I'm your host and mystery master, Randall Schaefer. Tonight, the corridors of mystery take us to 1942 for a 20th Century Fox film entitled Time to Kill. This is the seventh and final movie in the Michael Shane series. After this one, 20th Century Fox dropped all their B-movie series. B-movies attracted a smaller audience, so they could only make money if they could be distributed internationally, and World War II had closed off all the European and Asian markets. Those markets opened again after the war, but theaters had been destroyed, and those that survived often had no water, no electricity. It was not a good market for movies immediately after the war. Movie income from Europe and Asia recovered slowly in the U.S. Television began to erode the movie audience and killed any interest in resuming the production of B-movies. But television needed one-hour TV dramas very badly, and the B-movie producers had years of experience making one-hour dramas. They were called B-movies. So the B-movie was resurrected in Hollywood as the one-hour TV drama, and television enjoyed a much larger audience, and that meant lots of money for everyone and lots more jobs, too. In tonight's movie, Michael Shane is hired to retrieve a rare coin. His investigation reveals blackmail and murder. This story was based on Raymond Ch the Raymond Chandler novel entitled The High Window. Uh, that was a Philip Marlowe book. That, Philip Marlowe was the main character, but 20th Century Fox simply turned it into a Michael Shane movie. In 1947, the same story was remade into another movie entitled The Brasher Doubloon. Tonight, Michael Shane is played by Lloyd Nolan. He was the star of all seven of the Michael Shane movies in the series. Let's return to 1942 and enjoy Time to Kill. I'll be glad to give you some references. Let's see, you can call uh, Senator Hugh Oglethorpe. Uh, uh, no, 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 you better not. I beat Huey playing golf yesterday. Yeah. Uh, you can call Sid Dreyfus. Mm -hmm. That's Judge Sidney Dreyfus, yes, State Supreme Court. Oh, that reminds me, I'm supposed to have dinner with him tonight. Pardon me while I make a note of that, will you? I have Judge Dreyfus. Bill Curtis, the law firm of Curtis, Arthur, and Titus. Oh, just a minute, Mr. Shane. Just a minute, please. I I broke my... Mm, how embarrassing. I broke my pencil. All right, I have another. Well, don't try to pole vault with it. You got Curtis, hmm? Yes, Mr. William Curtis. He's in the Belfont building. And let's see, then there's... Uh, put down Winfield Brown, uh, sanitary engineer, South Main Street. And if you want any more, uh, Richard Mannion. I'm sure these references will be ample, Mr. Shane. Please come tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Oh, uh... I expect to be busy on a very important case tomorrow. I come over now. I can be there in a few minutes. No, you mustn't. Mrs. Murdoch would be furious. Please wait until tomorrow. Well... We'll expect you tomorrow at 10. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mrs. Murdoch, huh? 10 o'clock. Shane. Good morning, Mrs. Murdoch. Oh, I'm afraid you've made a mistake. I'm not Mrs. Murdoch. I'm Miss... Oh, oh dear. I'm, uh, I'm Miss Davis, Mrs. Murdoch's secretary. Oh, for a minute I didn't think you were going to remember. <laughs> you're early. I'll tell Mrs. Murdoch you're here. Mm. What is it now? Mr. Shane is here to see you. You know, Mr. Well, I don't want to see anyone until I finish the 
for breakfast? I'll have him wait in my office. Oh, very well. Show him in. Hurry up! You can go in now. Thanks. When I say 10 o'clock, I don't mean 9.50 or 9.59, I mean 10 o'clock. Well, Mrs. Burdock, <laughs> you know what the book says about the early bird. No worms here. Hey, you can't tell what you'll have to find in an old barn like this. Oh, but... Oh, you're not quite what I expected, Mr. Shane. Oh. Well, what did you expect? Top hat, striped trousers, and cutaway? Hardly. Something fat and egg-spotted, with dirty fingernails chewing on a filthy cigar butt, and with his hat on its head. <laughs> How'd you happen to call me? You were selected for the scientific method of using a pin on the classified section of the phone book. Oh, and I got stuck, huh? I hope I shan't be. What's on your mind? When my husband died, he left me a valuable collection of old coins, the rarest of which was a brasher doubloon. A what? A brasher doubloon. It doesn't mean anything to me. Here. This is a brasher doubloon. Oh. It's an old American gold coin about the size of a $20 gold piece. Ordinarily, a copy is worth several thousand dollars, but mine happens to be particularly valuable because the designer, a man called Brasher, put his initials on the left wing of the eagle instead of the right. Oh, yeah. That's very interesting. What about it? A coin dealer called me up yesterday. Said he had a mate to mine. Wanted to sell it me. That roused my suspicions. I've been through my collection. The doubloon was gone. Mm. It was stolen. Well, it didn't work out under its own power. Well, why didn't you call the police? Because it was stolen by one of my own family. Oh, how chummy. Who? My daughter-in-law. I have an idiot for a son. About a year ago, a nightclub entertainer, appropriately named Linda Conquest, married him for my money. They came to live here. Apparently, I didn't support them according to her expectations. She left last week without saying goodbye or letting us know where she could be reached. The reason is obvious. And you think she took it, huh? I don't think. I know. Well, what's worrying you most? Do you want to get the whatchamacallit back or do you want to get your son unhooked? Both. I'm hiring you to get the doubloon back and to arrange a divorce without cost to me. Suppose she didn't take it. I expect you to prove that she did, and I'm asking no questions. Mm. Well, what are you going to charge me? Well, a dame like this Lindy, you know, she probably won't settle for less than uh, 50,000. Oh. And <coughs> you see, if I should keep her from making a bite like that on you, I think it's worth about 10%. <laughs> $5,000? Yeah. You're crazy. No, no, I'm just smart. Well, I'll cut it in half. I don't want a chattel mortgage on you. Just a few days of your time. You drive an awfully hard bargain. Now, wait, i tell you what I'll do. Make it $1,000, 500 cash. Now, that's the lowest I can go. How do I know you're worth that much money? Well, you checked my references, didn't you? I tried to. Merle, make out a check to this young bandit for $500. The only one of your references I could contact was the Mr. Winfield Brown. And to your information, he is not a sanitary engineer. He isn't? No, he's a plumber. Why the rat? He lied to me. Lied to you. Say, if your son is around, I'd like to have... Yes, he knows nothing about this. I thought he might know where his wife is. Well, he doesn't. He doesn't even know the doubloon has been stolen. Well, okay. You're dealing the cards. I can only play what you give me. Say, what's Linda look like? Have you got a picture of her? No. She's blonde, pretty, I suppose, in a coarse kind of way. Oh, that helps a lot. That narrows the field down to a quarter of a million. Oh, stop waving that thing at me. Mind you, keep your mouth shut about this. If Leslie gets to hear of it, I shall know who told him. There's your check. Thank you. Oh, uh, I almost forgot. What's the name of the coin dealer that phoned you? Washburn. Elisha Washburn, I believe. Elisha Washburn. Well, guess I can't make any more money around here. I'll say you can't. So long, Tuts. Touch. Hey, take it easy. Don't let that old sea cow get you down. You mustn't talk about her like that. She's very good to me. Oh, yeah, I can believe that. I suppose that flood of salt water is tears of gratitude, huh? Please go. Yeah, well, in a minute. But first, do you know any of Linda's friends, anybody who might know where she is? Only a Lois Morney, an old school friend of hers. She knows Lois Morney, huh? I can't tell you anymore without specific instructions from Mrs. Murdoch. Well? An early bird will get fat around here. Bye-bye. Who is that? I can't tell you, Mr. Murdoch. You're going to tell me? I said, who is he? 
It's Mr. Shane, a detective. What was he doing here? Your mother hired him. I don't know why. She told me not to tell you. If you tell her, I did. Shut up. I won't tell her. Quentin Stamps. Who's calling him, please? I'm calling for Michael Shane of Shane Incorporated. Just a minute. Yes? Uh, Mr. Shane calling you. Oh, uh, Mr. Washburn. Yes, I'll put Mr. Shane right on. Ready on phone for Mr. Shane. Oh, <laughs> uh, hello, Mr. Washburn. I understand that you deal in old coins. Of course I'm interested in old coins. That's my business. Mm, good. I think that I have an item that might interest you. Could I come right over? Well, it's lunchtime now, then I have an appointment. I'll be back about 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock, huh? Okay, I'll be there. Well, business is really picking up when the worm comes to the early bird. Why did my mother hire you? Your mama told me not to talk to you, so you just go play in your own sandbox. You're going to tell me. Oh, dear. Please excuse what is about to happen. I'm not kidding, Shane. Now, Leslie. Be more careful with these things. Uh, 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 uh. You know, I'm beginning to dislike you. You better get going. Hello, sweetheart. Hello, Mr. Shane. What do you want? Yeah. Is Mrs. Morney in? She's not home. Hey, wait a minute. How do you know if you don't ask her? She ordered to tell me. Is this the dog I'm supposed to be aware of? <laughs> yeah, give him to me. Well, what do you want? Oh, uh, I'd like to ask your wife a few questions, if you don't mind. Oh, that's a good one. He thinks you're Alex. <laughs> oh, you mean you aren't... Uh, no. What's on your mind? Here, Lou, let's see it. He's a snooper. Lou, will you put Matt Adorney's pen, please? He's awfully cute, ain't he? I mean the dog. 
Won't you sit down, Mr. Shane? Yeah, sure, thanks. You know, you can't be much of a detective or you'd know Lou Venter. Oh, I was just being diplomatic. Oh, how nice. Have a drink. No, thanks. I never touch it before six. Oh, then uh, sometime after six. Sometime, maybe? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Say, I understand that you know a girl named Linda Conquest. Do I? Who said so? A worm's mother. You know where she is? Somebody drowned in the pool a week or so ago. We didn't look to see who it was. Uh, <laughs> now, look, now, finding her is just a matter of time, but you could be an awful lot of help to me if you wanted to. Maybe you could make me want to, if there weren't so many people around. Oh, you mean to say we're not alone? All right, wise guy, on your way. No, it's a very funny thing, but sometimes I, I have little head noises, you know? <laughs> Sounds just like voices. <laughs> I said get out. I heard it again, right <laughs> there. <laughs> oh, don't, don't. One hand, did you see that? Well, I guess there's no use my sticking around here any longer. Not as long as you have another woman on your mind. No. <laughs> well, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, don't forget, sometime after six, sometime. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Oh. <laughs> oh, Lou, you're all wet. <laughs> I'm getting awful sick of this. What's the idea of tailing me, huh? Take it easy, Shane. Take it easy. Here's my card. All right, get confidential. What's on your mind? I wanted to find out if you were smart enough to be worth talking to. Look, I'm very smart. It'd be a shame not to talk to me, but you're going to make it fast. I think our interests are the same. What makes you say that? I saw Leslie Murdoch come out of your office. Oh, you working for his wife? Maybe. Want to talk? Well... All right, where will you be in about an hour or so? At that address. Here's the key. You can let yourself in if I'm not there. All right. I'll see you later. A brasher doubloon is a very rare piece, young man. I'd hardly have one. Then again, you might. One that was stolen from Mrs. Murdoch. Was Mrs. Murdoch's coin stolen? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the one you bought. Now, see now, here. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's okay. Any reputable dealer would do the same thing. Buy it cheap, return it to its owner at a fair profit. What's wrong about that? How much will your client pay? $1,000. You probably paid about $500. That'd give you a very neat turnover. <laughs> You're a smart young man. Hmm. Come back at 11 in the morning with the money. The coin may or may not be here, but if I'm satisfied with your behavior, I'll arrange matters. Oh, that's fair enough. Oh, uh, by the way, what did she look like? She? Well, all right then, what did he look like? Oh, you mean the party that sold me the doubloon? Well, let me see. He was middle-aged, heavy-set, about five feet seven, weighing around 175 pounds. He wore a blue suit, black shoes, green tie, and brown bordered handkerchief. His hair was gray. There was a mole on his nose and a long scar. What about that hole in his right sock? I neglected to remove his shoes. Uh, Good day, Mr. Shane. Good day. See you in the morning.
Miss Smithers, I wish you... Mr. Shane, I was under the impression you had left. It's all right, Mr. Washburn. <clears throat> it's all right, Mr. Washburn. He was just making a... I was just about to ask your most attractive secretary out to dinner. <laughs> Not a breach of business etiquette, I hope. Upon consideration, Mr. Shane, I prefer to drop the matter we discussed. Please come in, Miss Smithers, when it's convenient. I get off at five, Mr. Shane. Huh? I get off at five. Oh, uh, no, I'm afraid I won't be able to make that engagement tonight. You can't? No. I'll be very busy beating myself on the head with a hammer. I'll give you a ring sometime. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. I'll be thinking of you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're the only dame I go for? Yeah, me and anything in skirt. Can I help it if them babes won't leave me alone? I gotta be polite, don't I? Don't try to feed me that trap, you big love. Save it for your while I read it. Shut your big trap or I'll stick a fist in it. Why, you filthy... I thought you was Phillips. No. Your best friend. No, you see, uh, I was just, uh, I'm employed by, uh, well, uh, this car will uh, explain everything. Now, what was the idea going through my pocket? I did not go through your Oh, you did. Uh, Phillips, uh, wrong John? Yeah, he's a jewelry thief. Yeah, we get one once in a while. Can't help it. You know, after this, I'm going to make these guys give me references. What, and have a flock of empty rooms? Well, what do you want? Pipe down, Hench. You're making too much racket. Now, I ain't gonna ask you again. The next time, I'm gonna call some cops. Go on and call him, you dirty little stool pigeon. You heard me dim that radio. Cut out the rough house and make it sudden. Why, you measly little rat! Oh. Hey, where's the big idea? Hey, watch it. Hey, what do you think you are? I'm just the manager of this dump angel face, and when I say quiet, I mean shut up. Hey, look who's here. You're pretty. Yeah. Who do you think you are, huh? Well, I don't know. Who do you think I am? I know who you are. You're young Lockenbar who's come to carry me away. <laughs> Where's your white horse? Lockenbar? Hey, you. Lockenbar ain't the name on this card. What's the idea? <laughs> well, what's so funny? You are his name. I said, what's the idea? Look, you got much more than that to worry about. What do you mean? A bullet's been fired from this gun, and the guy across the hall's been murdered. Murdered? <laughs> murdered? <sighs> People want to keep on killing each other. Well, Breeze, when they stop, you and I will be out of a job. Here's Hens, Lieutenant. Sit down here. This your gun? Yeah. All right, a bullet's been fired out of it, and Phillips, the man who lived here, has been killed. Now, suppose you tell us about it. I don't know anything about it, except I didn't shoot that gun in a couple of months. If you didn't fire it, who did? I don't know. Now, look, lying isn't going to get you anywhere, Hench. I ain't lying. Say, Lieutenant, you mind if I ask him a couple of questions? Help yourself. Hence, were you and your wife out of your room between 3 and 5 o'clock? We went out to get something to eat. Uh, I don't know what time it was. Now, do you remember if you left the door unlocked when you did go out? I was pretty tight. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I did. Look, let's say they went out between 3 and 5. Suppose they left the door unlocked. Maybe open. While they're gone, somebody slips into the apartment, borrows the gun, uses it to kill Phillips, and then puts it back. That's your theory? Yeah. I suppose you don't like it. It's all right, but I like mine better. Phillips has been making passes at the blonde. She doesn't resent them, but Hench does. He gets himself all liquored up and wants to tear Phillips apart. Phillips doesn't want to be torn apart, so Hench shoots him instead. There you are. Take him down, Spangler, and the girl, too. I didn't fire that gun, and nothing you can do will make me say I did. You know, Hench, one of the boys just figured out something kind of cute. Claims it'll make a dummy talk. It's done with mirrors. Mind if we try it out on you? Try anything you want. Remember that yarn you told me about how you met Phillips? Made a date to see you here, give you the key and all the rest? Yeah, word for word. You mind word. making a record of that? My kids are crazy about low comedy. 
Oh, you don't believe me. What do you think? You mind telling me what you're working on? <laughs> no, sorry. I can jug you. Yeah, sure, you can jug me, but it's customary to have some kind of grounds, you know. I've got plenty. You finding the body, not giving a satisfactory account of your relations with the dead man, and if that's not enough, I can throw in suspicion of murder. It sounds awful. Go ahead, why don't you jug me? Oh, get out of here. I got work to do. And don't leave town, we want a statement. You can have the one the bank sent me. You'll get a great laugh out of that. Say, you're not gonna take me down to your rotten jail. See, hey, beautiful. Slug this guy for me, will you? Oh, I'm sorry. You know who that is? That's Duffy. And you know, he, you better be careful what you do with me, because he's gotta, he's gonna come after me. Mr. Michael Shane's office. Oh, hello, sweetheart. Any calls for Mike Shane? Yes, Mr. Shane. Just a second. Linda Conquest called you, said if you wanted to see her, she'd be at the Ottawa Valley Club after 9 o'clock tonight. Hey, wait a minute. Did you say Linda Conquest? At the Idle Valley Club, huh? Okay. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Oh, good evening, sir. Uh, I'm looking for Linda Conquest. Are you Mr. Shane? Yeah, that's right. This way, please. Thanks. You're new here, aren't you? Yeah, it's about two weeks. What's your name? Rudolph, sir. I'll tell Miss Conquest you're here. Thanks, Rudy. Mr. Shane's in the first booth. Thanks. Good evening, Mr. Shane. Oh, are you Linda, Linda Conquest? Huh? Well, won't you sit down, please? Holding yourself into one of these things like trying to get undressed in an upper berth. <laughs> Lois Morney told me you were looking for me. Uh, yeah. I didn't expect you to bounce into my lap, though. Somebody once told me never to run away from trouble. And I find it isn't half bad when you meet it halfway. You always invited out to a nightclub? I work here. Oh, oh. Why were you looking for me? Well, briefly, your mother-in-law wants to know how much you're going to soak her to unhook Leslie. Well, you can tell Mrs. Murdoch I want nothing from her or her son. Eh, ah, what's the catch? There isn't any. It simply means that I want to get rid of the Murdochs as quickly as possible. Now, is there anything else? Oh, yeah, there is. There's an old coin, a brasher doubloon. Did you ever hear of it? Yes, what about it? She wants you to give it back. She thinks I stole it? Mm -hmm. When I left the Murdoch home, I took nothing but clothes enough to keep me out of jail. That's an awfully pretty dress. A brash of doubloon would buy a lot of them. You can believe me or not, as you like. It'll save you a lot of trouble if you do. Now, is that all? Yeah, there's just one more thing. A man was murdered this afternoon, a George Anson Phillips. Oh, is that supposed to mean something to me? Well, yes, he was working for you. Oh, that's absurd. Well, he told me so himself an hour before he was found dead. But I never heard of him. What was he supposed to be doing for me? He was a private detective. I don't know why I'd need one. I suppose I'll be involved with the police. No, not necessarily. I'm the only one that has to know about it. Meaning, if I return the doubloon, you'll say nothing? Mm -hmm. Yes, you can trust me. Well, Mr. Shane, I'm afraid you'll have to tell them. <coughs> yes, Rudolph? I beg your pardon, Miss Conquest. It's time for your next number. Thank you. Oh, say, uh, I've, I've never heard you sing. Do you mind if I listen? No, no. Thanks. Hello, Mike. Glad oh, to see you. Hello, Alec. How are you? Fine. Say, you haven't been out to see us in quite a while. Well, you haven't had any good murders. <laughs> now you got me worried. You know, whenever Shane shows up, there's usually a corpse. Oh, what a horrible reputation. <laughs> Excuse me, please. Yeah, sure. Swell girl. Yeah, she seems to Come be. Come on, I'll buy you a drink. Fine. What do you have? Give me a bourbon and plain water, will you? Brandy for me, Dan. I had the craziest dream last night. Yes, I did. I never dreamt it could be. Yet there you were in love with me. Hey, what do you want with Linda? I thought the only thing you chased was clues. Well, a wolf in me comes out now and then. <laughs> half wolf, half bloodhound, That's eh? Right. She's married to Leslie Murdoch, you know. Yeah, do you know him? No, I mean, he got into me for a chunk of dough. Well, his old lady's got plenty. Yeah, but he can't get any of it. I don't understand why Linda would marry a heel like that. You don't understand why who would marry a heel like who, darling? Why, it's Mr. Shane. Oh, yeah? Ah! Ah! Take him to my office. 
George. All right, folks. All right. right. It's all over. Just sit down and relax. I've got the first to for the rest of the baseball bats. What's the idea of your little playmate slugging Shane? Well, he tried to drown Lou this afternoon, so everything's even. Or it was until you bought it in. No, not true, butting in. Go with you in a minute. Well, I see the slaughter has started already. Sorry I'm late. You're too early to suit me. Get out and stay out. I was under the impression your trap was open to the public. It's not open to rats. I came here to see my wife. She doesn't want to see you. Are you going to get out or do I throw you out? He's in the boss's office. When Mrs. Morney and Benter came, they had a little trouble. Benter and Alex? Well, it was more of a round robin. Benter hit Shane, the boss hit Benter, and Benter hit the floor. Excuse me, please. when a detective bursts into my hall, my wife's boyfriend in the swimming pool. You're being very stupid, Alex. I've already told you what happened at the house. Yeah, what I want to know is what you haven't told me. Come in. What do you want? Oh, I uh, found this in the cocktail lounge. Wait a minute. Here, this belongs to you. Why did Shane want to see you? Did you ask him? I did, and he told me it was none of my business. Mrs. Murdoch sent him to arrange a divorce for Leslie. I hope you're satisfied. Venter, I'm warning you to stay away from my wife. Now get out. It would be a pleasure to accede to both of your requests. They aren't requests. And that's the hope you remember. I told you your rotten temper would get you into trouble. He'll take you for everything you've got. At least he won't be taking it behind my back like he's been doing. Alex! Well, looks like my reputation for starting trouble is holding up pretty well, doesn't it? <laughs> doesn't it? Say, uh, what was the name of the man you said was murdered? George Anson Phillips. Why? Well, this was in Venice wallet. It might interest you. Looks to me like Panther knew Phillips. Yes, that's a fairly reasonable deduction. You know, you'd make a pretty good detective. <laughs> <laughs> what are Albestone and Cristobalite? I don't know, some kind of chemicals, I guess. Will that help you? Well, something might hatch out if I keep it in a warm place. <laughs> <laughs> it's about time for my next number. Uh, uh, when do you get off? One o'clock. Well, I'd like to catch up on my nightlife. Do you mind if I stick around? All right. That's yeah, fine. Yeah, uh, all this extra service, I throw in free. <laughs> you know, you're not a bad brand of trouble, Mike. No. I'm sorry our friendship has to be so short. What do you mean short? As long as I think you have the doubloon, I have to keep an eye on you. Then you don't believe me. Oh, you see, my mama told me never to trust a beautiful woman any farther than I could throw in. I don't know how far that is now. <laughs> I hope you don't try to find out. <laughs> Good night. Good night. We have a little financial matter to take care of this morning, haven't we? Yes, Mrs. Murdoch. Didn't you have it on the calendar? Yes, I did. And why didn't you remind me of it? I was going to. Let that slip once and you'll be in a fine kettle of fish, won't you? Yes. Very well. 
Take care of it in the usual manner. What are you so nervous about? Nothing. It's, it's just that I hate... Yes, what do you hate? Well, I don't see why I have to take it to him when it could be mailed just as well. That's something over which I have no control. All I can do is to supply the money every month. Sorry. You've been wonderful. I, I don't know how I can ever make it up to you. One way would be to let me finish my breakfast. Murdoch's residence. Well, good morning, Snowflake. Pry her loose from her raw meat and put her on the phone. Well? Mr. Shane calling you. Put him through. Hello, what's your good news? Oh, hello, Mrs. Murdoch. Well, it was an awfully tough job, but I finally persuaded Linda to be reasonable. Reasonable? How reasonable? All she wants is her freedom. Excellent! How did you manage it? By taking her on a cook's tour of the nightclubs, dancing my legs down to the knees, and talking myself into a case of acute laryngitis. <coughs> Hope your health isn't completely shattered. And never mind about my health. There's a $200 debt in my bankroll, and I'm a setup for breach of promise. Well, I can at least cure your financial ills. Mail me your statement, and we'll consider the matter closed. And uh, wait a minute. What do you mean closed? What about the brash at the balloon? I'm happy to say I have it. I had misplaced it, found it in my dressing gown this morning. You misplaced it? And you're very happy to have found it. Well, is that just dandy? If they're accusing your daughter-in-law of stealing it. Sending me out in a wild goose chase, almost getting me landed in jail, getting me mixed up in a murder case. Oh, you better itemize your bill. Itemize it? I'll item... Oh, yeah. itemize you a bill you love. She misplaced it. So happy to have found it. Balance... Due on contractual agreement. Five hundred dollars. Expenses. Oh, oh, gonna love this. Let me see now. Flowers. One orchid, course size, ten dollars. Make it twenty one dollars. <coughs> what are you looking for? Nothing. All right, here I am. I signed for a special. Talking to yourself, huh? I always knew you'd come to it, Mike. Come to what? Mr. Shane, come in. Oh, that's him. That's him. Mr. Washburn wouldn't do business with him like I said. Well, <laughs> thank oh. you, Miss Smithers. I'm sure you and Mr. Spangler will excuse us. Mr. Shane. Hey, uh, you haven't forgotten our little date, have you? Hmm? Hey, uh, who was the body that just rode out? Was that the what? young lady's boss? Somebody killed him. Who would want to do a thing a nice old guy like Washburn? I'm curious about that myself. This business you had with him, do you mind telling me about it? Well, certainly, you see. I'm a numismatist and I came up... A new... I beg your pardon, a new what? A numismatist. A coin collector to you. Uh -huh. See, Washburn buys him and I... Well, I was a little broke. Yeah, the lady said he wouldn't do business with you. He just thought my prices were too high. You know, horse trading. Sure, sure. So you come back to Dicker some more. Maybe lower your price a little, huh? That's right. Do you mind making a record of that, too? 
Would you believe me if I showed you the coin? I wouldn't believe you if you showed me the United States Mint. And I'm getting just a little annoyed at the way you turn up every time there's a murder. Now, once more, who are you working for? <laughs> nope, I'm still sorry. You're going to be a whole lot sorrier if you don't tell me. We're not going into that routine again, are we? Well, I'm a reasonable man. I'm going to give you until... Go on, beat it. Oh, thanks. Oh, say, you mind telling me how Washburn was killed? He was hit on the head. With a blunt instrument. Huh? Yeah, with a blunt instrument. <laughs> Four o'clock, you've got six hours. Okay, Toots. Mr. Washburn was such a nice boss. No, no, Miss Smithers. You can call me Arna. Hey, Frank, a nice going. <laughs> oh, there he is. Oh. <laughs> it's that detective. Hello. Is the old lioness still eating her raw meat? If you brought the itemized statement with you, you can give it to me. You know, you'd be a real pretty girl if you stopped boycotting beauty parlors. Did you ever have a boyfriend? No, really, Mr. Shane. I just thought I'd ask. Oh, dear. What's the matter? What are you looking for? My notebook. I... Oh. <laughs> I, I was... Uh... Thank you. Say, if you happen to remember, tell her I'm out here, will you? Oh, so loud. Can't you hear the bell? I'm sorry, Mr. Mr. Shane is here to see you. Well, send him in. Send him in. We'll take care of the other things later. You can go in. Say, don't let her get you down. She had an unfortunate experience with one. It shocked her. She never fully recovered. Anybody I know? No. You brought your bill, I presume? Well, I haven't made it out yet. Say, do you mind if I take a look on? Not at all. Mm. What's the matter? You act as though it might bite you. It just seems funny for this gadget to be worth so Gadget, much. indeed. There are only five of them in existence. Do you happen to know who owns the rest? I don't know. Washburn, the coin dealer, could probably tell you. He seems to know where they are. Now, I'm afraid Washburn can't tell me. Why not? He's dead. Dead? Yeah, he got himself murdered. Oh, that reminds me. The police want to know who I'm working for. The police? What business is it of theirs? Well, they think it'd help clear up the murders of Washburn and one other guy. Talk sense. What you're working for me got to do with it. I happen to be around. They think I know something. You've made a nice mess of things. I'm afraid I've got to tell them. Why do you have to tell them, Shane? Oh, snooping again. Get out of here. Why do you have to tell the police? Because I like them. And because I think I can help them clear up a couple of murders. I said get out of here. Don't be stupid, Mother. You don't want the police in your hair. Say, Leslie, why does the idea of the police asking you a couple of questions send you into such a dither? Because the matter for which you were hired is none of their affair. Oh, I'm afraid they'll disagree with you when they find out that both Washburn and Phillips were interested in the Brasher de Bloom. Mother's coin had nothing to do with any murders. What do you know about it? Everything. I took it. You? Well, I owed Morney a lot of money and he was pressing me. I gave it to him as collateral to keep him quiet. When I found out you'd hired Shane, I, I got him to give it back to me. So, you took it? Well, yes, I didn't think that... You didn't think that it would cost me $1,500 and get me trusted up with the police? Get out of here! And you? Oh, I... Tell the police what you like, but get out! Yeah, get out. I'll mail you a statement. You won't get another blasted cent out of me. If I don't, I'll let Linda sink it in up to the hills. Now, here is a mole made of Alberstone. Alberstone is used by all dental technicians because it has a very fine grain and retains the minutest detail. As the name implies, it is a stone. What is Cristobalite? Cristobalite is also used for making molds. We have some very fine examples right here. Cristobalite is also a stone. It can stand a great deal of heat without the slightest distortion. It's yeah. all according uh, to how you want to uh, use uh, it. Sometimes... Listen. Wait, wait. What is it used for? Oh, for making gold inlays. Well, that's all I want to know. Tomorrow I am a dentist. Oh, oh not that fast. No. The dental profession is highly exacting. Yeah. You can't be a dentist but overnight. It requires did, years of did, study did and Did you ever see this before? Why, yes. I filled this order out for a Mr. Venter about two weeks ago. Is he a dentist? Well, I don't know about that, but he's given me several orders in the last few weeks. Right. Say, if you're interested in pursuing your dental studies, I'd be very glad to help you out. I'll give you my home address and telephone number, and you get in touch with me at your earliest convenience. I'm sure you'll be very interested. It's a very smart move you make. He'd have never made a dentist. Mike, you're two hours late. Oh, yeah? Wait for what? You're going to tell me who you're working for, remember? Oh, yeah, that's right. Say, so how's the food down at your jail? Meaning you ain't going to tell me? I'm your guest. <laughs> but it won't be necessary this time. Hench confessed to Philip's murder, and it was over the girl, like I told you. Hmm. 
What'd you do? Use that new third degree method one of your guys thought up? In the mirror? Yeah. We made him look at his own pistol. He got so fed up, he was glad to talk. That'd be inhuman. Oh, uh, Mike, is that nice? Say, what about Washburn? Accidental death. Weak heart. Had a stroke and hit his head. Mm. You know, I'd still like to know why Phillips wanted to see me. I don't think Phillips wanted to see you about anything. Of course, that's my personal opinion. Oh, hello. Hello. Oh, if you're busy, Mr. Shadow. Oh, darling, busy. Why, a man's never too busy to see his fiance. Oh, uh, by the way, dear, at the end of those flat feet, you will see Lieutenant Breeze. Lieutenant, I want you to meet Miss Hope, my intended. Well, I'm glad to meet you, Miss Hope. <laughs> hey, you're a sly one. Knowing Mike as well as I do, he never peeped a word about his getting hitched. Oh, maybe he isn't used to the idea. Takes a little time, you know. <laughs> sure. I can hardly realize it myself. <laughs> well, I can see you're too good for him. Oh, Mike's all right, but he's a terrible wolf for the ladies. Oh, hey, Mike. <laughs> well, good luck to you anyhow. Huh? Uh, well, I mean that. Uh, so long. So long. Now, will you be good enough to tell... Oh, Peeping Tom, huh? Uh, uh, looking for a cigar. Here, yeah. that it? Yeah. See, Breeze let himself in here with a pass key while I was gone. I was afraid he was up to one of his old tricks. Tricks? Yeah, like planting a dictaphone around. He's trying to find out who I'm working for. Boy, I have to really talk fast when you popped in. Oh, you did all right. Rechristened me and ruined my reputation in a matter of split seconds. Well, I like that. How does your being engaged to me ruin your reputation? Well, you forget I'm still married. Ah, uh, say, what did you come in here for? I was curious about that dental supply bill I gave you. Oh, I can tell you how to make a gold inlay. Oh, what about Venta? Well, he's on the calendar for tomorrow. Linda, I killed him. Merle, what's the matter? What are you I talking about? Him. You've got to get hold of yourself. It's my gun. I killed him with it. You killed who? I came here because I... I didn't know where else to go. Well, you came to the right place, Merle. Now, suppose you tell us all about it. Was it Leslie? Leslie? No, why should I kill him? I never liked him, and I, I didn't have any reason to kill him. But you did have reason to kill this other one, hmm? Yes. The way he looked at me. He just sat there in a chair and stared at me. I couldn't stand No, 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 take it easy. We've got to try and be calm. Figure this thing out. That's better. Now tell me, was it Venter? Yes. Venter? You're surprised, aren't you, Linda? Didn't know about Mrs. Murdoch sending him money every month, did you? You didn't know that I had to take it to him. Is that what's in this envelope? Yes. Yeah, but Merle, what's the idea of carrying a gun? I was afraid of him. Why did Mrs. Murdoch send him money? I can't tell you that. How long has this been going on? Eight years. I should have killed him a long time ago. I've thought of it every time I went there. I never had the courage until today. I think I went sort of crazy. I couldn't hear anything. I didn't even hear when the gun went off. All I could see was his eyes staring at me. I couldn't stand it anymore. Take it easy. Take it easy. Take it easy. You know, she hasn't killed anybody. At least not with this gun. Hasn't even been fired. Then what's it all about? Look. You take Merle over to your apartment. I'll try and join you as soon as possible. Where are you going? I'm going over to Bender to see what I can find out.
ahead. I'm not going in. And stop pushing me. You weren't so formal this afternoon when you let yourself in with a key. Sure, I had you followed. You're being very stupid. We're just good friends, that's all. And I'm staying here while you make a scene. Listen, sweetheart, you're not leaving. We're going to settle this once and for all. Even if we have to wait here all night for Venter. Alex! He's dead, all right. Why did you do it? Why did you do it? Why are you trying to blame me for something that you did? You probably found out he was giving you the air, so you... Oh, killed. shut up! I, uh, I forgot to pull the ripcord. <laughs> uh, uh, just go right ahead as though nothing happened. Don't let me interrupt you. What are you doing here? Well, now, that is a question that the cops are going to be asking you. You better have a good answer for it. We had nothing to do with it. Oh, that isn't the way I heard it. Now, listen, Shane. You're involved in this as much as we are. Only there are two of us. How much do you want to keep your mouth shut? Uh, do you mind if I let you know about that after I've consulted my lawyer? Okay, Mike. I gave you your chance. Alex! Break it up! Break it up! Break it up! Oh, you guys need a referee. All right, come on, Shane. I'm anxious to hear all about it. You better take a look in there. Yeah? Sight unseen, I'll lay odds. Somebody's dead. Isn't it about time Mr. Shane got here? He'll be here any minute. That's probably him now. I had to see you, Linda. When I told you I was through with you, I meant it. Linda, please, I love you. Oh, stop it. Mother won't interfere with us anymore. I've left her house. Look, let's get out of here. Go away someplace tonight. There isn't anything you could say or do that would change my mind. There's someone else, isn't there? No. You're lying. I followed you last night. You've fallen for that she a good pair. You're just as rotten as he is. Get out! I'll get out when I'm ready. I wouldn't be surprised if you were in there right now. What are you doing here? Nothing, nothing. If you're looking for Mr. Shane, you'll find him at Mr. Venter's house. Venter's? Have you got Venter's phone number? Yes, in my bag. Oh, hurry, please. Hurry. I was on to them all the time, Chief. Got here before they could make a getaway. Show us what you can do when you stay on the job. <laughs> yeah. So long. Following me around shoe makes you look smart. The trick is to know who to follow. Mm. Hey. You're not a very smart liar, though. What do you mean? I happen to know that that coin dealer, Washburn, didn't die of a heart attack. He was shot. You win, Mike. I gave you a bum steer so I could check up on you. That confession of Hench's was all a lot of bunk, too. Yeah, you see, I... Breeze talking. The devil, you say? The devil, you say? Yeah, I'll be down pretty quick. Well, it's just like I figured. Vendor killed Phillips and Washburn and then bumped himself off. Hey, what makes you think that? The ballistic report shows the gun we found here killed all three men. That doesn't prove that Venner committed suicide. No, his fingerprints were on that gun. All right. The killer could have wiped his own fingerprints off the gun and put Venner's on. Killer what killer? What are you talking about? Steady, I'll handle everything from here on. Okay. Hello. Hello, is Mr. Shane there? Who wants to talk to him? Oh, Lieutenant Breeze, this is... Uh, Miss Hope. Oh, Miss Hope. Oh, well, just a minute. It's your fiancé. Huh? <laughs> Hello, sweetheart. Oh, Mike, I've been trying to get you. Darling, it was so thoughtful of you to think of calling your little sweetie pie. 
You know I told you I'm never too busy for you. What's that? Well, what's wrong? Something happened to Merle? Knocked out cold, but there's nothing wrong with him that a long rest in one of our deluxe rooms won't cure. Do you know him? Yeah, his name's Leslie Murdoch. You give him the mirror treatment, and you might get a lot of information. Yeah? Mike! 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 Hello. Mike, are you all right? Oh, hello, sweetheart. Sure, I'm all right. Oh, thank goodness. I called to tell you Leslie is on his way over, and he... Leslie? Oh, he just dropped in. Yeah, he had a little headache. Look, I'll be along right away. And be sure and keep Merle there. Bye-bye. You see, Leslie, Phillips, and Venner were making counterfeits of a brash of doubloon to sell to coin dealers and collectors like Washburn. What I want to know is who killed Venner? Everybody started to double-cross everybody else. Phillips was afraid he might get bumped off, so he mailed me one of the counterfeits. What I want to know is who killed Venner? Oh, you want to know who killed Venner? Yeah. Well, maybe Leslie can tell you. He tried to bump me off because he knew I was wise to the counterfeiting racket. Did you kill him? Well, that's all right. He'll sing plenty later. Meanwhile, all the information we need is right here. All right, let's see it. No, no. First, you call your office, tell them to pick up Mrs. Murdoch. And then, you and I'll take a little ride. Come on. Hello, Linda. Hello. Meeting with Hope? Merle, this is Lieutenant Breeze. It's true, wasn't it? You found him dead, didn't you? Yeah. You've come to arrest me. It's all right. I've expected it for a long time. Ever since... Ever since I killed Leslie's father. Say, what's this all about? What is this about Mr. Murdoch? I was his secretary. Most of the time he was very nice. When he was drinking, he was horrible. I came to the office that way one day. It was awful. I went out of my head like I did when I killed Mr. Venter. I... I didn't know what I'd done until Mrs. Murdoch told me. She came in right after it happened. What did she tell you? But I pushed him out of the window. So this thing's getting screwier and screwier by the minute. Here, take a look at that photograph. What? That's the building where I pushed Mr. Murdoch out of the window. Yeah. Now look at this one. Is that Mr. Murdoch? Yes. And that... It was her. She did it. It wasn't me. No, it wasn't you. And what's more, you didn't kill Venter. That's an idea you can get out of your head right now. Hey, what are these pictures? That's a picture of the Lansing building taken during a Decoration Day parade about eight years ago. And this is an enlargement of the window of Murdoch's office. Looks like the dame is pushing him out the window. She is. Well, it's Mrs. Murdoch. His wife? Why would she want to push him out of a window? Well, she happened to come into the office when Merle was having trouble with him. And a little later on, when he was looking at the parade, she pushed him out. You see, she collected a good deal of insurance at his death. And all the time, I thought she was being so good to me. Paying out all that money to Mr. Venter. Paying Venter money? What is this? Well, I'll tell you. You see, you know that Venter was a camera fiend. He happened to be taking pictures of the parade that day from the building across the street. By accident, he got this snapshot of the murder, and he's been shaking down old Lady Murdoch ever since. Blackmail, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, that makes about every crime in the book. And I still don't know who killed Vendor. Why, Lieutenant, I'm surprised. It's all so very simple. Oh, is it? Now, look. When Leslie married Linda, his mother cut off his allowance. So he fell for Venter's scheme of counterfeiting the doubloons. When things got too hot, Leslie tried to pull out of the racket. Venter threatened to expose his mother as a murderess, so Leslie killed him. Hello? Yes, just a moment. It's for you, Lieutenant. Hello. What? The devil, you say? The devil, you say? What kind of a mistake? All right, stick around there. Hey, what's the matter? Your client is dead. Mrs. Murdoch? Yep. Choked to death on a T-bone steak. Well, Merle will be home on the farm tomorrow. She certainly was tickled pink at the prospect of seeing her folks. Yeah, wasn't she? She was very grateful to you, Mike. Oh, that wasn't anything. Say, uh... How long are you going to be in Reno? Just six weeks. All right, swell. I'll give you a ring the moment you get back to town. You will. Mm -hmm. I may hold you to that. Hold me to what? I have a first-class witness in Lieutenant Breeze that you're going to marry me. Driver, Union Depot, please. Hey, wait a minute. You can't do that to me. Or can she?
Did you enjoy the movie? We certainly hope so. We is me, Randall Schaefer, Dan LeClaire, who's the cable access guru, and my wife, Judy. We enjoy bringing these old movies to you. And you can see black and white murder mysteries every Thursday and Friday night right here on your Hastings Cable Access channel. We want to be your source for black and white murder mysteries from the 1930s and 1940s. And we hope you join us for Hastings Mystery Theater. Hello, I'm Randall Schaefer. You see me hosting Hastings Mystery Theater here on the Hastings Cable Channel. Hastings Mystery Theater is produced for the local cable channel in Hastings, Michigan, USA. We are rated as one of the best 100 small towns in America, Hastings, Michigan. Look us up on the internet. Take a look at some of the reasons we are one of the best hundred small towns in America. And maybe you'll see why those of us who live here really like living in Hastings, Michigan. And also, continue to watch Hastings Mystery Theater. Thank you.